reading to you from 2 Timothy, 1st chapter, 7th verse. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this is Evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic, and I gave my height to Christ over 52 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. Well, I've been preaching ever since. Well, uh, I'm still taking my cancer treatments. Please pray for me. I know that there's a cure. God can cure. And, you know, sometimes he heals, sometimes he doesn't. But don't ever tell anyone that he doesn't have the power, because he does. Well, listen, friends, I'll be with you for a half an hour tonight. Well, you just kick off your slippers, sit back and relax. Pour your glass of iced tea, maybe a lemonade. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? Friends, if you have your Bibles with you, will you turn with me to Second Peter and the second chapter and beginning with the first verse. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring uh, upon them swift destruction." And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they have feigned words like merchandise of you, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingering not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them in a change of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them examples unto those who after should live ungodly and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. This is labeled tonight, False Teachers and Their Fate. Dear precious friends, there are so many false teachers in the world today as they were in Jesus' day. And I'm telling you, friends, you got to be careful to what you listen to. you got to be able to, to sort out the, the uh, uh, weeds and the, from the bad weeds. False teachers are a constant concern in what Peter was talking about in verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even though as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Well, you say, well, Cecil, Dad, burn it. I listen to some of these people on television and they sound pretty good, but every once in a while they come up with something really rank. Do you know there was a great healer who traveled all over the world making millions of dollars healing bodies and this and that. 
Well, this one rich man, I don't know if he was a Christian or not, but he was a very wealthy rancher, and he had a very, very expensive bull, Hereford Bull. And he contacted this healer, and he told him, uh, I will give you $15,000 if you'll come and raise this bull from the dead. Needless to say, the the uh, supposedly healer did not take him up because he couldn't do it. Friends, I know that it's 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 common to believe some of these people, some of these charlatans, but I'm telling you, you search the scriptures and you teach and listen very carefully what they teach and you'll find out they're false as false can be. Now, uh, this was in the time of Peter's writing. I read it before. I'll read it again. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon them swift destruction. There's one very famous man today, I won't use his name, very famous man, who teaches uh, that he's a great healer, and many times I've heard him say that he is so anointed that that night in the meeting and the power of God was was so strong upon him that this particular night he, this man, was going to release the power of God's Holy Spirit in that meeting. That was blasphemy. He can't do it. Man cannot re release the power of God's Holy Spirit. But now there are those who say they walk so close with the Lord that... Uh, that God tells them what to do and how to say it. I heard this one evangelist from, uh, no, where is he from? Down uh, New Orleans. Who and I read his book. A woman gave me the book, and I, I almost vomited. That when one time he was sitting in his study, and God just drew him right out of his seat, drew him right up to heaven, and he sat down with Jesus. And yeah, you may have read the book, so you know I'm telling you the truth. And the Lord said, you're my man. You're the man. You go back to America and you tell him what I said. And friends, you know that's a lie out of hell. Nobody's passed from here to heaven back. That's a lie out of hell. You don't, you don't have no trouble believing that. It tells us in uh, 1 Timothy, uh, the first chapter. Let me get back over here. 1 Timothy. No, that, wait a minute. Oh, my stars in the morning. Just a second. Let me look this up quickly. Here, I got it. Nevertheless, give heeds to neither give heeds to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith so do. This is especially true in the last days, according to Peter. Timothy, I mean. A, pa a pastor may must warn his people of heretical teachings. Now, pastoral warnings about false teachers may not be popular. In fact, it isn't popular if you're trying to build a church. And unfortunately, dear friends, and I hate to say this, but there are many pastors that has one desire, to build a huge, huge church. And uh, so they can get sent to the Holy Land once a year, past, you know, their ticket paid for. But I'm telling you, dear friends, it's the pastor's job to warn the people of these false teachers. Some may think the, bad, the pastor is judging others wrongfully. Now, the faithful pastor must risk reproach to protect his church. Now, com Peter compares the future of false and true teachers. Now, what does it tell us here in the Second Timothy? Let me get over here again. You know, I'm having a hard time seeing what I'm doing here tonight. My eyes aren't too good. Okay, let's get over to 2 Timothy, okay? And uh, let's see here. My stars in the morning. False teachers, the Bible said, are like fallen angels. They have no regard for the price of... Christ paid on the cross. Friends, there's another great healer, supposedly great healer, who recently built a $7 million house in Southern California. 
do you believe that man is of the Lord? The Bible said that Jesus didn't even have a place to put his head. The fox have holes, but Jesus didn't have a place to put his head. The disciples left their uh, prosperous uh, fishing boats and other jobs to follow Jesus. They didn't think about how much they're going to make. And you know, friends, many, many times over the years, I've received calls from uh, pastors in the South, mostly in the South, Virginia and Alabama and stuff. They said, Brother Mo, we'd like to have you come and speak in a couple of weeks re revival. What is your price? And I've said many times, I don't have a price. I don't have a price. I don't charge people to preach even though I can. I can do that. Pastors should be paid a salary. They sure should. And so I'd tell them I have to fly down there. I have to stay in a motel or wherever someone put me up. But it's up to you to see that I get over and back. But there is no fee for my preaching. And I've done that all my life. Ever since, oh, my life, ever since I've been called to preach, which was 1956. I've never put a price on my preaching because God called me to preach. He told me to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. And I've tried to do that today, dear friends. I feel my heart goes out to these evangelists. The only way that I was able to go in the, in the world and preach, I went to Japan and Hawaii and Alaska and Canada and, and all over to preach, was through my business. Otherwise, I would have never been able to go. Some of these dear evangelists don't have a job, don't have a business. And so the churches don't call them anymore. This is what's happening today. This is why evangelism is out the door. We're not having evangelists come and preach. Uh, you know, a pastor is a pastor. A pastor and evangelist are two different people, two different callings, but the same Jesus. Now, the reason we're not having success in revivals is because they're using pastors instead of evangelists. You can get mad at me if you want. False teachers are like fallen angels. They have no regard for the price uh, Christ paid on the cross. They turn their minds uh, of their hearers to religion instead of redemption. The other day I saw this famous southern preacher, and I think he's from Texas. And this is what he, he preached the gospel. He sure did. Then he got up, and here's what he said. How many of you here tonight want a miracle? And... Lo and behold, you ought to see the people fill that altar. He never said, how many of you need to put your trust in Jesus? Miracles come along, all right, but you need to trust Jesus first. Jesus said, you people are following me for the miracles and for the bread I give you. And today people are seeking miracles instead of Jesus. That's The miracles come, but they're not the important issue. The important issue, have you repented of your sins? Have you called upon the Lord? Have you accepted Him as Savior? People uh, are asking to be healed without being saved. Now, a false prophet would do that. He'd want you to be healed, and then he'd want you to throw your, your crutches in the air or your wheelchairs. In fact, Jesus, many times, when he healed people, said, don't tell anybody about it. Jesus was not uh, uh, glorifying himself because he could heal. But these people stand up before you and say, Well, look at there. Praise the Lord. Look at there. Let's pass the offering tray. Their approach is smooth, but they offer no assurance of eternal life. Think about it. If you watch them, you listen to that, you'll find that they don't talk to you about coming to Jesus. And you know what? They deceive uh, many and make them their followers, verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. False teachers speak against the truth and they create and preach another gospel. Oh, he told them in Gal Galatians, who has be, who's bewitched you? Who's come in there and told you another way to get to heaven? There's only one way. Jesus said, 
I am the way and the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the Father, what, except by me. Now listen, friends, I know you don't like to hear this. Their aim is often to get the money of their followers. Verse 3, And through covetousness shall they feign words, making merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Now, I remember years ago, and I, I, I have to bring up his name, and I'm saying that all Roberts traveled all over the world telling people and healing people, supposedly healing people. And then the next thing I know, God told him that he was to build a hospital. Now, if he has a healing power, why is he building a hospital? And then one day, God told Oral, if you don't come up with so many million dollars, I'm going to take you out of this world. Well, Oral, Oral got on TV and radio, and he pleaded for people to send money in so that he would not have to die. Well, he gave a deadline, but the money didn't come in. So the Lord gave him an extension. Oh, friends, if you believe that, I got some property down here in the Okafoki Swamp you can have. They use deceitful words to speak against the gospel, verse 3. And through covetousness shall they have with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose lingering judgment now of a long time lendereth not, and their damnation slumber not. Beloved, listen to me. We're living in the last days. I want you to know that. We're living in the last days. We're living in troubled times. All you have to do is read the newspaper or watch television. The leaders of every nation are scared to death. They're getting together now, and there's wars everywhere, every country is involved in some kind of a conflict. You can't even go to a soccer game if there isn't a knockdown drag out. I know one time, and I, <laughs> I'm not proud of this, but one time this great supposedly famous wrestler come to Denver. So my grandsons and I, we went to this fight, which is all fake and funny too. But anyway, before the fight was over, a fight broke out in the stands, a bunch, a bunch of Hispanics and whites, and they got into a knockdown drag out over this fight. I said, let's get out of here. This is not where I want to go. But see, a lot of things are fake, and boy wrestling is the biggest fake there is. You think they don't have to be good athletes? Of course they do, or they'd get killed. They do get hurt. One of my, one of my classmates in the Dalles, uh, she married a wrestler, and he died with head injuries from wrestling. It used to be, you know how you can tell uh, whether a wrestler <laughs> is for real? Many of them wear earrings, and they wear things in their nose and in their lips. You never see cauliflower ears anymore. In the old days of Strangler Lewis, they used to have, they, their ears were all cauliflowered. But today they don't do that. Well, the Bible says, the judgment of false teachers is sure to come. Don't be impatient. God's going to deal with them. God didn't spare fallen angels from judgment, and he will not spare them. Verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them in a chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. They use deceitful words to speak against the gospel. Now, the judgments of fallen teachers is sure to come. God didn't spare angels from the judgment, and he will not spare them. Now, the Bible said Noah was a preacher of righteousness. False teachers are like the sinners in Noah's day. Now, look at Noah's message was difficult to deliver, but it was true. Noah focused on faith and was spared along with his family. Now, let me tell you what. When God told Noah that he had a job for him to do, I cannot believe the, the, what must have went through his mind to build a huge ark 500 and some eight feet long and so high and my stars and no chainsaws and no, no electric drills. 
But they did it. It took them a hundred years, but they did it. And every night, Noah would go out and say, Folks, repent, because uh, there's going to be a great flood coming. And the people laughed at Noah. They said, The guy has been out in the sun too long. He's as crazy as a coot. Well, they laughed, but they went back to their religious re leaders to check, to be sure that they were right. And Noah was wrong, but Noah was right, and they were wrong. False teachers said, don't worry about it. Well, they'd never seen water like that. And one day, the Lord said, well, it's time to get the load up the animals two by two. And they did, they, let, they loaded the animals two by two. And the Bible said it began to rain. And boy, howdy, did it ever rain. Now, here's these unbelievers. He see, they see Noah and his sons and his wives, their wives go aboard and all the animals too, but do like he had promised it was going to happen. And now the water's up to their ankles. They say, Wait a minute. He did say something about that. Well, the next thing you know, we see water up to their knees. Now they're getting a little bit nervous. So they run over to their false preachers and false prophets and say what's can you explain this well no i don't know well don't worry about it he, he was crazy now my dear friends this old ark is riding on the waves these people are screaming noah noah let us in and let us in let us in but you know what the bible said god closed the door Today, my friends, Jesus is your ark of safety. You can still come to him. You can still repent of your sins. And he'll forgive you and give you eternal life. The false prophets will not tell you that. False teachers preach falsehood. They close their ears to truth and spread lies. They teach salvation by works or tradition. They convince their followers that truth is error. Noah and his family were spared during the flood. And false teachers await judgment for their twisting of the truth. Listen, false teachers are like those in Sodom and Gomorrah, verse 6 and 9. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an, uh, an overthrow, making them in samples unto those that after should live ungodly. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. Oh, my dear friends, I'm telling you. Jesus is coming back pretty quick. Are you ready for it? These deceivers reject biblical morality. They choose lifestyles, lifestyles contrary to the God's word. They scoff at holy living and biblical standards. Listen. Heretical teachings with untimely lead to destruction. Jude 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved an everlasting change under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about like them, uh, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are stead forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal life. Likewise, also, their filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Oh, listen, friends. The Lord will deliver his people and judge false teachers. You know what? Old Lot, he got moved into those Sodom and Gomorrah with his family, and he started living their lifestyle, started hooping it up and having a good time, and the Lord looked down. He said, I'm going to have to destroy that Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know the deal he made with, with Lot. And pretty soon, Lot delivered him and his daughters and his wife out of there before he destroyed the city. Told us, no, don't look back. But Lot's wife had to look back. And today she's standing as a pillar of salt in that great place. 
Oh, my dear friends, this is not this is not a joke. This is not uh, games. This is a truth. Jesus said you must be born again if you plan on getting to heaven. Now, he tells you you got to be born of first of the flesh, then you got to be born of the spirit, then you can go to heaven. If you repent, tell you tell the Lord you're sorry, turn your back on, confess that you're a sinner, invite Him into your heart. He'll deliver you from these false prophets. Reject false teaching and embrace the truth. The truth of the gospel brings people to eternal life. Are you ready tonight? Have you put your trust in Jesus? If not, I'm going to extend to you an invitation. I'm going to tell you how you got to be saved. First, you got to repent, confess that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on a cross for your sins. And if you're sorry for it, then you call upon him. I don't want you to pray this prayer unless you mean it. And here's how it goes. Kind Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sins. I confess that I'm a sinner. I'm hell-bound, hell-deserving. But tonight, I'm opening my heart and receiving you as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to get on the phone and call 303-471-8534. I won't use your name on the air. I won't embarrass you. I sure won't sit down, write, or or call you and ask you for any money. I don't do that. And I don't care where you go to church. I'm only concerned where you spend eternity. Please call 303-471-8534. If you'd just like to talk to me, I'd be glad to talk to you. So I'm waiting for your call. 303-471-8534. stars in the morning. Time goes by so fast. I didn't know it was so late. Well, friends, and your evangelist has been Evangelist Cecil Moe. And I want you to stay sweet. Keep looking up. Please pray for my health and pray for us in our prison ministries. So until this time next Sunday night, be good to your neighbors. Stay sweet. Keep looking up for this wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night and may God bless you real, real good.